Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, for joining us for the third day of the fourth uh, Mineral Project Valuation Colloquium. My presentation today is entitled A Digital Twin to Integrate and Run Scenarios. I'm actually presenting on behalf of Kobos Oosthuizen, who is the CEO of ESTEC. ESTEC and Vuma Collaborations are jointly working to bring a lot of the exciting systems thinking work that's been done in the motor, aeronautical and shipbuilding industries into the mining industry. So um, I've been presenting it today. A mineral project valuation is generally a, generally a process where you assemble a whole bunch of engineers into a project team, probably uh, mining engineers, mechanical engineers, civil, there's a QS to do the capital end, um, estimate, there's a business analyst to do the uh, financial model, there's corporate finance as well. And really it's a combination of putting the resource model valuation together with looking at the mine design, mining method. Now that's iterative to some degree because the mineral resource in itself determines the mining method and the mine design. And then you have to get the business analyst to put together a financial model which involves the capital estimate from the QS the operating costs, all the recoveries and all that to come up with an overall valuation, which might be an NPV, an RR, return investment or payback. Now, if you have a look at a, a typical study and, and the study starts and you've now assembled this project team together, all these different silos of work get done. You've got an estimated resource model, which is an input into a mine design. Your mine design is then done. It takes quite a long time. It's generally on the critical path of the capital project study. You then do the production schedule um, and maybe a few iterations of the project's um, uh, production schedule. Do your infrastructure design. Um, and then a, a QS would generally do a, quant a capital estimate, which is done to a fairly good um, estimate um, level, depending on the, on the study phase. There'd be a manpower plan, hopefully. I say hopefully because often you'll see a question mark in the presentation because often a manpower plan is not even done. Even the OPEX. Um, in the past, OPEX was just a, um, a an assumption. Um, there should be ideally a proper activity-based costing model that takes into account all the um, actual activity costs and assumptions that go into the whole mine design and the infrastructure running costs. Now, unfortunately, this financial model, which is generally an Excel model, pops out in the last week of the study. So there might be a one-year pre-fee study or feasibility, and then the financial model pops out one, one week before the end. You then get an NPV. And I've seen in the past when that NPV is actually produced and it doesn't meet the outcome or the hurdle rate. It's a negative NPV or doesn't give the return required. So now in the last week of the project, big panic to try and get that project valuation to be within what's required to present to the board. So I've had discussions where, well, let's try and cut the OPEX by 10%. Let's cut the CAPEX by 10%. But how do you actually go and cut that in the last week of the project when, in fact, the levers to adjust that are the mine design, the production scheduling assumptions, your infrastructure design, the choice of equipment, um, and then you end up presenting numbers which are actually not realistic and the project will never ever be implemented and meet the, the performance parameters that were actually done in the study. And that's how I've seen a lot of studies being done. Now, ideally, we need a model, a techno-economic model of the study right from the minute the project starts. Now, that could be a very high-level model, could be a high-level top-down model so that you can actually plot production rate, capex, opex, NPV, as the project progresses, as you can see from this next slide. So as you are doing design, engineering, and making project decisions, you understand the actual impact it has on the financial numbers of the project and the valuation. Now, obviously, the, the level of confidence during the study is increasing as we get more and more information and as the different designs are being done, which will, will just enhance the model and add more detail so that you can basically make proper engineering optimization or engineering value-based decisions so that when the, the review comes out at the end, you've tracked that project right through its full study. Next slide. So that project valuation really needs to look at the overall, what I call the mining system. Now, the mining system consists of the mineral resource, the mine design and schedule, and the infrastructure and 
and operating and support activities. Now, often that side of the mining value chain is not even really understood in terms of what that system can deliver. And often it's just averages of the average of drilling and, and blasting throughput, average of loading, average of hauling, if it's an open cost mine, for example, and the average of the different unit processes in processing without even taking into account the the interconnected nature of those activities and what they can actually deliver. So that system should really deliver an accurate capital estimate, a realistic OPEX estimate to operate it. What are the achievable, reliable, and sustainable performance? What does that system actually deliver on a sustainable basis, taking into account the interconnected nature of those activities? The maintenance strategy support the system, and ideally that maintenance strategy is aligned with what that system must deliver. So if you've got a maintenance strategy on hauling, it must take into account the hauling's capacity and what must be delivered and what the hours must take into account, or and also whether that activity is actually a constraining activity. And also a lot of the she and other social license requirements. I've been chatting to a lot of the engineering companies that do all these um, engineering designs for mines because I think that we, we are fundamentally delivering designs to the mining industry that do not meet the operating performance criteria and often that's because we're designing balanced systems and if you design a balanced system that will mean that the constraining activities or the constraining activity will be shifting you end up with a dynamic system what we should be doing is designing the system so we have a defined fixed constraint and then we design everything around that fixed constraint and all the other activities are then designed in such a way that they support that constraining activity. Just imagine if we design a mine where we know the way the constraint is and all operating systems around management routines, work routines, the, the data, the decision points in that mine is always understood what is the constraint and are focused on managing that constraint to make sure it utilizes its full availability with all the other activities subordinated. It would create a very, very different mine to operate. Now, there are a whole lot of philosophies around which which activity should be your constraining activity. Is it the highest capital cost or is it your scarcest resource? Obviously, also depending on whether it's a market constraint or there are other um, theories around the highest marginal increase in cost should be your constraining activity. I'm not going to dwell on that. There is some philosophies I believe are correct, but that's for another presentation. Now, a mining digital twin. Now, the, the digital twin has been utilized in the motor industry quite significantly over the last 15 years. It's not the only reason why the motor industry is achieving such incredible increases in efficiency. At BMW, you get a, a targeted 3% improvement in efficiencies every single year. But it's one of the fundamental things that has allowed them to integrate all the engineering disciplines and to test different scenarios around production before they even commit to building the plant. So what is a digital twin? Well, a digital twin should consist of the resource model, the digital terrain model, a mine design, and a discrete event simulation of the actual activity. So this, this is the core of the digital twin, so that we can test scenarios around what that overall system can deliver on a sustainable basis, together with the costs, revenue, and values, so that you've got basically a digital replica of your overall mining system. As the project progresses, the engineering CAD drawings could be included as well, so you could end up with the actual detailed CAD, so it ends up being a proper 3D design. And that now exposes management or the project team to the ability to run scenarios in this digital twin, testing different equipment efficiencies, change the mine design, change the production schedule, change your resourcing assumptions, change your maintenance schedule and see the impact, or your maintenance strategy to see the impact it has on every single activity for when it will actually operate as a final mine. And then that digital twin can be viewed in different ways. You can use augmented reality um, using the latest Microsoft HoloLens or some of the other competing products. You could even utilize the um, virtual reality center at the University of Pretoria. They have a state-of-the-art virtual reality center with a big uh, 3D screen together with some proper immersive technologies. And even use um, like the virtual reality headset from Oculus or some of the other ones that are, are com of the competing products. So the digital twin is a reality. It's been done in other industries. It hasn't been utilized in, in mining yet from what I can see. There are elements of 
simulation being used. Um, often it's, it's the, the realm of a, of a expert system, an engineer sitting in a corner office doing a detailed arena simulation, but it's not a proper systemized solution that you utilize within an overall project. So if you had to look at using a digital twin in a, in a study, you could build a digital twin of, of the study value chain, resource, mine design, schedule, and the actual activities to, to mine that material or to do that mine. And uh, you could build it at a very high level. So on day one, you could build a block that represents mining and a block that represents processing. And as the engineering disciplines generate more data or more designs, you can actually increase it. So it really integrates all the disciplines together. So you've got your engineering, mine design, all the elements, plus your quantifying operating parameters, plus your OPEX, so that you get a financial valuation out of that, that digital twin. And as the project progresses, you can add more detail, more detailed activity-based costing, more detailed CAN designs. You can therefore be running scenarios continually. And as your project progresses, you are increasing your level of confidence so that when the board meeting happens or the review or the Invesco, it's not one big surprise. You literally got the OPEX, the NPV, and the production rate coming out of that, out of that model continually as decisions are being made in that project. So that decision making now can be made during the project. You can in fact decide to stop the project to make some major decisions based on what you're seeing as the financial outputs. Ben Bernan from MSA Group will be talking a little bit about this in the in the last session today. But now we're looking at significantly reducing the time to do capital projects. We need to change the way we do capital projects. This thing of a linear process of of a a concept study, then a pre-fees, then a feasibility study with the, the linear stage gates needs to actually be re-looked at. And, and Ben will talk about this in a lot more detail. A digital twin will basically let us in- integrate all the engineering disciplines, allow for an iterative ongoing review process, and basically allow you to make a decision about the project as you're going along at any point in time. Also importantly, that digital twin can actually become the operating model of the final mind. So it seamlessly moves into the operating mode. So it is the model that you use to do full mine operational planning and, and not like current projects where you basically the detailed drawings and the 3D model is actually left generally in the hands of the EPCM. Here's an example now of a simulation model. This is actually a model that ESTEC built. It's got an, a, a vertical shaft. It's got rock hoist there. You can see going up and down in yellow. So it's a batch-based process. You've got all the different levels. Now, this is a full simulation of all these levels with the mining. And they've incorporated all the um, actual CAD drawings into this as more and more CAD information becomes available, but it can be added. But importantly, this is modeling. The actual trains running on those levels, the actual cleaning of the material off each of the levels into the ore passes and into the box holes. So it's the modeling of the interconnected nature of every single one of these activities. And that actually gives you what this overall system can ultimately deliver. So it's an integration of the actual mine design and the dynamics of this actual system um, in totality. So there you can zoom right into the into the model. And now I'm zooming out again, and you can basically model the whole mine and every single element in, the, in whatever level of detail that you want. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for listening. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask them. I think a digital twin offers massive opportunities in the mining industry to basically change the way we do capital projects and to reduce the timelines with which we do those studies, but more importantly, generate a more quality study by integrating all the engineering disciplines and allow us to make proper informed decisions based on what the actual financial impact of all those engineering decisions are on that capital. Thank you very much.